This last year was, for me, a very good year for owl photography. I'm no expert, but I would like to share what I've learned in order to help those that could be struggling to get their first owl photos. In this video, I'll cover my top tips and tricks for owl photography for total beginners. A fair amount of what I'll be covering is exportable to other regions, but my experience is largely based on observations gathered in the southern parts of Canada, mostly Ontario and Quebec, in the northern parts of the USA, mostly New York, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire. So your mileage may vary. When doing any kind of wildlife photography, it's super important that you act responsibly and ethically. Do not bait owls. Do not chase after them. Keep a safe dis distance that is respectful of their needs. In this respect, I've used for a long time a 500mm lens with heavy cropping, and I'm now relying more and more on an 800mm lens and still crop significantly. Do not play calls that can distract owls or stress them. Do not wake up sleeping owls. Do not throw objects at them to get their attention. Do not use flash or shine bright lights at them. In wildlife photography, the difficulties are twofold. The technique, getting good quality images, and finding the subjects. This video will be mostly geared towards the second aspect, but I will nonetheless say a few words about the gear. A good camera with at least a 300mm full frame equivalent lens is a must. A longer focal length, 400 to 600mm or even more, would be preferable as it allows getting better images with less cropping while remaining further from the subject and thus disturbing less the normal activities of the owls. Whatever you choose, don't obsess over the gear. Find whatever works for you and go spend time in nature looking for owls or other subjects to take photos of. Binoculars are among the nice things to have. They make spotting owls into the, in the field or forest less arduous. Remember that owls are masters at the art of camouflage. Appropriate clothing is also a must, because when you finally find an owl, nothing is worse than having to leave because you're cold or wet. For winter, in latitudes where icy conditions on trails are a problem, I would recommend over-the-boot traction aids like the micro spikes shown here. It's important to know your subjects. There are countless pocketable guides, smartphone apps, and numerous resources on the web to help you with that. Researching the topic is not only fun, but it also gives you valuable info for finding owls in the field. In my area, the four easiest owls to see are the great horned owl, the eastern screech owl, the barred owl, and the snowy owl. The great horned owl is found throughout most of North America. During the daytime, it usually roosts in large trees, often coniferous trees, especially in winter. The courtship is generally from October to December, and mates are chosen by December to January. Great horned owls begin nesting very early. Great horned owls occupy the territory year-round, and they're established and defended by hooting to chase away intruders. After incubation that usually lasts about a month, young owls may leave the nest and climb on nearby branches at around 5 weeks old and can fly at about 9 to 10 weeks old. In this video, taken early April, the owlets have hatched and are moving around, which means eggs were likely laid early March, if not before. You can also notice how rudimentary a great horned owl nest can be. The eastern screech owl is a small owl, about 25 centimeters 
tall that has adapted fairly well to the disturbances to the environment caused by humans and is a frequent resident in urban parks and suburbs with wooded areas. It's common in the east of Canada and present year-round in my area. During the day, eastern screech owls are generally roosting in holes or cracks in trees on branches very near the trunk or in nest box. Because of their small size and their excellent camouflage, they can be very hard to spot. As far as I can tell, they hunt mostly between dusk and dawn. I've yet to see one hunt during the day. In my area, barred owls are present year-round. Barred owls measure about 50 centimeters tall, which makes them somewhat smaller than the great horn owls, and according to pretty much everything I've read, much less aggressive than the great horn owls. Based on my experience, I would say that barred owls are mostly active at night, but will call, and even sometimes hunt in daytime. They have a signature call that has often been characterized as a who cooks for you, followed closely by who cooks for you all. I don't know that I really agree that it sounds like that, but I find it's a good way to remember the general feel of the call. The snowy owl is a large, powerful owl that spends the spring, summer and fall in the Arctic tundra. It migrates in varying numbers to the southern parts of Canada and northern parts of the states during the winter months. Males are mostly white, whereas females and juveniles are white with dark marks for camouflage. The snowy owl often hunts by day. It will hunt by looking for prey from a perch, then flying silently in a fast downward motion it drops to catch the prey in its talons. Notice how the camouflage helps the snowy owl to blend in with its surrounding. Tips for finding an owl in the field. When should you start looking for owls? You should start now, as winter is a good time. Why? Because the trees have no leaves, and because it is or will soon be courtship season, and most species are more vocal during this time. A good place to start your research for the general location of owl species in your area is with the site eBirds. The site lets you browse maps by species for your local area, giving you a valuable account of where other birders have seen certain owls in the past. There are numerous other sources for getting general observations from local knowledgeable sources. For instance, my area has several Facebook groups that share sightings of birds. Once you have a general knowledge of where certain types of owls have been seen, comes the hard part finding them in the field. Contrary to popular belief, you don't necessarily have to go deep into the woods to find owls. I live in an urban area with a population of 1.2 million individuals, and I've had reasonably good luck finding owls in the larger urban green spaces, especially if these green spaces are near woodlots, water, and fields. The vast majority of the shots in this video were taken within a radius of 8 kilometers from my home. The advantage of starting in urban areas is that owls are generally more used to the presence of humans. Most owls are masters of camouflage, so your best chances of finding owls in the field is when they're active, which for most species is, when, is during the period between dusk and dawn, so getting up early can have benefits in this case. Going out at night allows you the opportunity to narrow down the areas that owl frequent. 
Owls are particularly more vocal during the courtship period, which depending on the species and region is generally in the winter months. Owls call to locate their mate and to defend their territory also. Young owls, as in this video, also call for food. Things to look for. Look for whitewash on trees or look for owl pellets at the bottom of trees that could indicate that an owl roosts there. Look for oblong rounded shapes, oblong shapes with tufts in trees higher up and closer to the trunk. For snowy owls, look for the same shapes in fields, on telephone poles, or on fence posts. Perhaps my favorite trick, let the crows and the ravens do the hard work. Listen for crows cawing repeatedly in one specific area. In this video, if you look closely, you will notice that the young owl is eating parts of a crow that an adult has just captured. Crows don't really like owls and they will caw repeatedly to harass owls when they find one. To further harass the owls, the crows will sometimes dive towards the trees to pull up only at the last second while cawing at the owls. You can also listen to the alarm calls from other birds or small mammals like those of a squirrel. can't find any owls, don't worry. Enjoy the time in nature and consider using that fabulous long lens to isolate details in nature, flowers, leaves, patterns, textures. Bring a short focal lens and take photos of landscape better than the golden light of a rising or setting sun. Take photos of dew or frost covered plants. Be creative. None of the tips in this video will guarantee that you will find an owl, let alone get a good photo. So the key is to be patient and persistent. These are my favorite tips. I'm no expert, but I hope they can help you along the fascinating journey of owl photography. If you have some other good tips for finding owls in the wild, please share them in the comments section below.